Welcome to Answers in Second Esther's produced by The God Culture. We just covered Messiah's rebuke of the Eagle Empire, telling it to be gone. And now we will get the full picture here of the end battle. This is awesome. This eagle and all those with it will be consumed. You will see how this is the true origin of much language in the book of Revelation. But why not bury this book, right? I mean, just forget about it because it was labeled by illiterates, Pharisees, they're illiterate, as Apocrypha, meaning, well, outside of the Pharisee canon. Let's be clear, that is what that term means, Apocrypha. It's Pharisee, not Hebrew, kind of like Klingon, right? If you know what Star Trek is. It's their own language and their meaningless term, as they never had authority to choose Bible canon, and theirs is impertinent. It does not mean outside the Bible canon, no, so it doesn't matter, because the temple priests are the only anointed to keep Bible canon, and Pharisees were rebuked by Yahusha, Mark 7, in this regard, specifically. And those temple priests, many, many times, actually do the same. They rebuke them as well. Just read the two charts in the introduction, where we catalog the many descriptions of these Pharisees, as liars, hypocrites, seed of Satan, sons of Belial, Satan, uh, synagogue of Satan, and you want to listen to them for your doctrine, you can go ahead. You want to follow their Pharisee canon? Well, your modern Bible is a Pharisee Bible, and the leaven needs to be rooted out. The Bible is still preserved, but we all have the responsibility to prove all things and hold fast that which is good. I mean, just because Messiah quoted and used it, as did John and the apostles, the temple priests, well, we should still just forget about it because, well, modern scholars, well, they know better than Messiah. Really? Don't think so. They pick canon, not the temple priests now? Is that right? No, it's not. Not according to Scripture. And any modern scholar that attempts to do so in ignorance is inept. They're following Pharisee 11, not the Bible, as they do far too often, and we catch them many times on this channel. The Old Testament is not actually up for debate. There is no debate. It's settled. The temple priest kept Bible canon. For the Old Testament. And their canon is the only canon. Period. No one can overcome that. The temple priests kept it and they used this book, at least in interpretation, second Esther's as well as first, indisputably. If any scholar tells you they know better than Messiah, who even launched his ministry there at Qumran or the biblical Betabara, we prove, then they are no Bible scholar. And you need to test everything they say, because they don't even know the ministry of keeping Torah. And that is pretty bad. The one and only true library kept by the sons of Zadok, the temple priests, never Pharisees, who are inept and don't even represent Torah, according to Messiah, in his own words. But instead, they actually represent the Talmud, the Talmud's interpretation of Torah, which is not Torah, it's the opposite. It's rebuked and laid out by Messiah many times as the opposite, as against his commandments. No one can overrule the canon of the temple priest. It can't be done, which we now have in archaeology, mass archaeology. Second and first Esdras are used in interpretation as such, and we will cover that too, uh, not in this video, but go read our introduction on that and see for yourself. Open your book of Second Esdras to chapter 13, beginning in verse 1. The man from the sea. And it came to pass, after seven days I dreamed a dream by night. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea, that it moved all the waves thereof. Wow. 
And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. Now that's Messiah. All things trembled at his sight. Wow! Dude, this is so cool. This is no different, by the way, in Revelation. Though... We like Ezra's language even better. Uh, Some confuse Messiah's skin color, by the way, in that passage in Revelation, which is simply not there. His feet are as brass as it exits the furnace, which is glowing, not black. There's no race in that passage, and there is none here either. That's heavenly anointing. And here it is again. Then Revelation also says his countenance is as the sun. Same here in Ezra, but all things tremble at the sight of him. Man, yeah, the enemy forces cried, Who can make war with the beast? Remember that from Revelation? Yahusha will, and he will consume him. That's who. Who can make war with Yahusha? No one. Ah. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth... All they burnt that heard his voice. Wow! Just like Revelation, the sword from his mouth consumes his enemies. Only here, it's a sword of fire. Just like the one from the Garden of Eden, the precedence is there in Scripture, as well as we all know that the earth is remade with fire in the end. So this is consistent and works perfectly. Like as the earth fails when it feels the fire. So, it is the same eternal fire here. Nothing can overcome it. Nothing can survive it. It purifies all things and anything impure, devoured, including spirits. Hmm. And even angels. Wow. Verse 5. And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number. Now, this is not the innumerable believers from heaven yet. We're not there. These are against Messiah. You'll see. Mm. From the four winds of the heaven, so really that's around the earth, from all over the earth, to subdue the man that came out of the sea. That's Yahusha. But they will fail. They fight in vain. But I beheld and lo, he had graved himself. He built for himself a great mountain. So this is a new mountain and flew up upon it. So what is this? This is not an existing mountain. No, it is a new one built by the hands or really not even by the hands, but built by Messiah. This is New Jerusalem. And in this passage equated to Mount Zion. Big key. Not the one in Israel, because that's already there. That's been there. But the one he builds a new one. Israel has numerous things named after heavenly concepts, which is a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. But it is not heaven. It's not heavenly Jerusalem, nor is it heavenly Mount Zion, according to this passage. For Jerusalem, in this age and in the last days, in the time and context of this passage, is spiritual Sodom and Egypt. And that mountain is defiled right now, in our age. So until the earth is remade, no, that's not the right mountain. There's nothing holy about it or that entire land right now. It is defiled and a stench in Yahuwah's nostrils. But I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven, and I could not. So Ezra would have said so if this was Israel. He would have known, but it wasn't. Mm. Now that is interesting, something we're not going to cover in this video, but very interesting. He knew that land well, but he didn't know this one. Yet he does not see Israel here. It's just not there. Verse 8, And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him 
were sore afraid and yet do fight. Well, why would they do a thing like that? Because they are irredeemable. They've taken the mark of the beast. So their, their attempt is futile in either direction. So they have probably figure, I might as well go ahead and fight because I'm going to die anyway. Verse 9, And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came. So they, they were violent. Now, we know their weapons of war today. Well, nuclear bombs, you know, helicopters, jets. I mean, they'd be bringing everything at him. And it's nothing to him. He neither lift up his hand nor held sword. One came out of his mouth, but that's different. But he didn't have to hold any instrument of war. <laughs> This is lightweight. For the anointed one, our Messiah, you think the cross was something? Oh, it was indeed, no doubt. But this day to come will be far more significant. His greatest work is ahead, not behind. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests, even storms? Wow, this is incredible. I mean, Hollywood is nothing compared to the true account of this power of Messiah. Again, same as Revelation, a sword from his mouth, consuming his enemies. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude, which was prepared to fight, and burnt them up every one. Whoa! So that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. Whew, I'm getting goosebumps here. And yeah, no doubt, Ezra would be afraid because seeing that would be overwhelming, no doubt. Afterward saw I the same man come down from the mountain, that's Mount Zion, which he built, without hands, but he built, he constructed, New Jerusalem has to be, and call unto him another peaceable multitude. Okay, so this is different. This is a peaceable multitude. These are not at war with Messiah. These are the remnant believers, and they're already on earth, notice. And there came much people unto him, whereof some were glad, Some were sorry, some of them were bound, and other some brought of them that were offered. Then was I sick through great fear, and I awakened and said, Now this is heavy. Wow. Let's follow through the interpretation of this vision. Verse 14. You have shown your servant wonders from the beginning and have counted me worthy that you should receive my prayer. Show me now yet the interpretation of this dream. For as I conceive in my understanding, woe unto them that shall be left in those days, and much more woe unto them that are not left behind. Understand what Ezra means here is woe unto those who were consumed with eternal fire, those those ones that are left. But those that are left behind, see, that's a good thing and actually a good term, not left behind of a rapture, no. Left behind, meaning surviving to the end and not consumed, so that's still left, not ashes, <laughs> not smoke, uh, but thus these are the remnant believers. And that is a good thing. And yes, believers will go through the great tribulation pretty much in all of Scripture. That's not news, and that's not new in Ezra. That's the same in Revelation. And we're going to cover that next. Ezra just said so, though. 
For they that were not left were in heaviness. Now I understand the things that are laid up in the latter days, which shall happen unto them and to those that are left behind. Again, it is good to be left behind in this context. It's not bad. These are not left behind in a rapture that's totally different and actually, quite frankly, we're going to get to the rapture. Don't worry. It is a reference here to those who survive to the end and are not consumed. Therefore, are they come into great perils and many necessities, like as these dreams declare. As the great tribulation, they survived it, and some will. Remnant believers will. Yet is it easier for him that is in danger to come into these things than to pass away as a cloud out of the world and not to see the things that happen in the last days? In other words, it's easier to be an unbeliever and go with the flow. We know this. this, is, this is, that's truth. There's no doubt. Take that mark, right? Be able to buy and sell. It's easier. It's going to be much easier. Oh, but destruction shall come to those. And he answered unto me and said, The interpretation of the vision shall I show you, and I will open unto you the thing that you have required. Whereas you have spoken of them that are left behind, this is the interpretation. Verse 23, he that shall endure the peril in that time, the great tribulation, has kept himself. Yep, believers will go through the great tribulation. That's just fact, folks. And it's fact in Revelation as well. Not new. Paul says it as well. We will go there. They that be fallen into danger are such as have, oops, works and faith towards the Almighty. Wait, works and faith together? What? I mean, what? Th that's not what the Bible says, is it? <laughs> Read Hebrews. And even Paul agrees that we will have faith and works, and that faith without works is dead. So let's stop telling people to have dead faith. How about that? Know this, therefore, that they which be left behind, again, a good thing, are more blessed than they that be dead. What? I mean, Kirk Cameron told us it was better to be raptured, right? Well, we'll cover the rapture timing in the next video. I'm pretty sure we'll we'll be able to do that one next. And we've been waiting and waiting to get to that. And I think this is the appropriate time. So we're looking forward to that. But, you know, Cameron has a lot of uh, growing pains to go through still because there's a lot of things he does not know. He has a lot to learn as far as the full account and understanding because he just plain doesn't yet, not based on that movie especially. Second Esdras would assist, but he's too busy defending the occult pagan birth of the sun god called Christmas to worry with the, you know, bothersome truth of the word. Christmas is an assault on Shavuot, the true birth of Messiah, and we prove that in when was Jesus born. Watch that. No, try to debate here and you'll be muted. That is not what this video is about. Our channel, Our Rules. This is the meaning of the vision. Whereas you saw a man coming up from the middle of the sea. Who's this? The same is he whom Elohim the highest has kept a great season, which by his own self shall deliver his creature, and he shall order them that are left behind. This is Yahusha. And whereas you saw that out of his mouth there came a blast of wind and fire and storm, a sword in Revelation, a flaming sword, consistent, and that he held neither sword, so one came out of his mouth, but he wasn't holding one, not in his hand, but from his mouth, nor any instrument of war, 
but that the rushing in of him destroyed the whole multitude that came to subdue him. This is the interpretation. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth, and he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. And one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, and one realm against another. Matthew 24, there will be wars, rumors of wars, right? And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass, and the signs shall happen which I showed you before. And then shall my son be declared, whom you saw as a man ascending. Now that's only Messiah. Ezra saw his birth, his death, his ascension, and now second coming, 400 years before he was born in the flesh. Verse 33. And when all the people hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have one against another. Check this out. These who have taken the mark of the beast, meaning they have chosen to be an enemy of Yahushua, knowingly and willingly, yes, deceived, but they choose to come against him in vain, of course, but putting aside their issues with each other. They hate him more. And that is the world in which we live right now. I mean, it's already forming. People are already getting to the point where the lukewarm is disappearing. And that's what you'll see over the next century. The lukewarm will disappear and you will have a stark contrast. Those that are for and those that are against And an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as you saw them willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. Well, at least they'll try. The whole world, the whole earth, folks, only the remnant will remain and does not fight Messiah, of course. But he shall stand upon the top of Mount Zion, New Jerusalem. Remember, he built that mountain with his Well, not hands, but himself. So it did not exist prior to this event in this passage. Thus, it is not specifically Mount Zion in Israel. Remember, Ezra could not identify the location, in fact. 36. And Zion shall come and shall be shown to all men. Come. See? Being prepared and built. It's new. Like as you saw the hill graven without hands, it was built. Yahushua builds this Mount Zion. He does it without hands, but he also consumes the multitude without using his hands. So that's no surprise he can do that. It is New Jerusalem, which comes down from heaven, as you see in Revelation as well. It is nothing that is here on earth, including any known mountain. And this, my son, shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations, which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest, and shall lay before them their evil thoughts and the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented, which are like unto a flame. And he shall destroy them without labor by the law which is like unto fire. Oh, we're going to cover that in an entire coming video with many other passages to support. So I'm not going to touch that here, but wow. So the whole multitude comes against Messiah. Billions. The entire earth unites like at Babel against him again. But it is in Vain, for they are consumed in likely seconds, the whole of them. Billions! Wow! Our Elohim is an awesome Elohim indeed. Now, what happens next? To be continued, because Ezra is now going to identify the lost tribes 
of Israel. He's going to tell us where the northern kingdom is especially. Yes, they are scattered actually today, factually even, right now, into every country on earth. Once you identify them, you'll see that is fact. Even Antarctica. However, there are only three regions which house the migrations of these lost tribes. None went into the Russian steppes. Oops. So, mm, that's just Pharisee migrations, not lost tribes of Israel. Two for the north and one for the south. None into Europe. And I said none. No mass migrations recorded in that direction. You can watch our Lost Tribes series if you want to skip ahead on that, but we are going to get there soon in this series. Just one video, probably. I don't know, maybe we'll do more, but uh, thus far we're just planning one video, which will be more of a, a recap and with a different twist. Much more to cover in this hidden book of prophecy, indeed. Don't worry, we're not done as Second Esther's is not done covering the end times. There's still a lot to come. Next, let's tackle one of the most controversial topics of our age. It's time. The rapture. Let's do it. When does it happen? Is it scriptural? And what happens? Then Ezra exposes what he calls, and this is fascinating, the dragons of Arabia. Whoa, who are they? Oh, they're here today. We'll cover that. Then let's take another one head on. Who is Babylon the Great and Asia, whom he rebukes together? Is it America, as some have said in even viral videos even? Or is it someone else? Oh, that's going to blow your mind. We will go there and it will challenge many even from Revelation not just even Esdras. We will then show you from the Dead Sea Scrolls that 2nd Esdras is found there being used in interpretation prior to Messiah. We will also get to the Lost Tribes of Israel and several other topics, more signs of the end to come, parables that will blow your mind, really cool ones coming, I mean really cool ones coming, and we'll even take on one of the bedrock doctrines of most churches today and test it in a video. What happens when we die? Do we go to heaven? Do we go to hell? Do we sleep? Let's prove it out once and for all. Ezra does and it agrees with the whole of Scripture. We have over 300 videos on this channel, many just as profound with some 50 or so in Tagalog for Filipinos. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications of new uploads. Join our email list as YouTube well, just forgets to notify often, eh, always for most, and we will notify you ourselves at thegodculture.com and just fill in the pop-up. Friend us on Facebook at The God Culture, space hyphen space, original. We now have five books published internationally, being read in over 80 countries, with our new release now available, Rest, the 400-plus page case for Sabbath. Amazing. Just go to uh, OphirInstitute.com for all of the links for all of the books, and you'll find them in your area. Yah bless to everyone.
In 400 BC, the prophet Ezra predicted, For my son Yahushua shall be revealed with those that be with him, and they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. Essentially, 0 BC, the era Messiah was born, and by his very name, in exactness. After these years shall my son Messiah die, and all men that have life. The origin of John 3.16 And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass, and the signs shall happen which I showed you before. And then shall my son be declared, whom you saw as a man ascending. Even the end times are defined long before the book of Revelation, the son of Elohim being confessed in the world. After seven days, the world will be raised up, mass resurrection of those who are asleep, the judgment seat, evil will disappear. The Lion of Yehuda will consume the final empire, consuming his enemies with fire from his mouth. The lost tribes return. Every eye shall see him handing out crowns and giving palms. The road to salvation is a narrow gate. Few are saved. The Garden of Eden and the Tree of Life are opened in the end. He is not willing that any should perish. The signs of the end times and origin of Matthew 24 in part. These are just some of the many prophecies in the book of 2 Esdras, long before the book of Revelation was conceived. Second Ezra, written before John's revelation. This is the interpretation of the dream which you saw, and whereby you only are here lightened. For you have forsaken your own way, and applied your diligence unto my law, and sought it. That's Yahuwah speaking to the prophet Ezra. Second Ezra is dated at least 1st century B.C., as it is used to interpret Habakkuk and blessing of the prince of the congregation who is Messiah. This includes a radiocarbon dating testing uh, as well of one fragment from 120 to 5 B.C. We cover this in the introduction. This book includes 1st Esdras as well, which is also dated to the 1st century BC, when one examines what is called in fraud the Proto-Ester fragments from the Dead Sea Scrolls, which do not remotely fit Esther, but are a match to 1st Esdras. We cover this in the introduction of this book, as well as on our YouTube uh, videos on Esther in the original canon series. Second Esdras was quoted by Messiah according to the original authorized 1611 King James Version. Matthew 23, 37, and 38 is a direct quote from Second Esdras. Esdras, which is anchored right there in the margin note as the origin of Messiah's words. For Esdras is second Esdras, which we explain in the introduction. Yes, he quoted second Esdras multiple times. When accurately dated, 2nd Esdras proves the origin of significant doctrine in the New Testament. We cover many such instances in the introduction. There is a reason why these two books remain in some Bible canons to this day. They test as inspired scripture. Test them for yourself. 
Get your copy now, free in ebook. Again, this content is free. If you would like it in print, it is available on Amazon internationally and Shopee Philippines. Just go to twoesdras.org. Download the ebook, and the links are there for your area. <music>